I'm Venus with Galaxy Inc. And for this week's writing tips, we are going to be finishing out our Elements of Writing series. So this is week 12, and this week we're going to be talking about copy editing and proofreading. I expect that this one will actually be shorter than the others. Also, there's a reason why this one definitely has been left to last, because this is kind of the last thing that happens to your book. And so I don't want... Uh, to confuse people by putting it kind of earlier in the series. So this is very English centric, by the way, a lot of things I'm gonna talk about. So the first thing I wanna say is that you, the author, do not need to be a copy editor or a proofreader or have perfect grammar in order to be a writer. That should just go without saying, but I wanna say that upfront because I think a lot of people think that their books need to be perfect when they send them off to publishers or when they send them off to an agent. And yes, there's a certain amount of mistakes that and things that they don't want to see but for the most part you're not expected to be perfect all right I will say here's some here's my secret I edit books for a living and I cannot edit my own writing at all I uh, I'm just too close to it you know I even as I'm reading a sentence if the word the is misspelled in this h-e-t het uh, all the letters are there and my brain sees the because that's what I want to see. That's what I know is supposed to be there. And so I can't edit my own books. Uh, and I've kind of fallen in love with things like certain scenes or phrases or thoughts or expressions. And so they don't belong there, but I don't see it. To me, it's a great little thing that belongs there because I wrote it and I like it. Um, it doesn't matter how well you write. Uh, or how well you think that you know about, how much you think you know about spelling or language or grammar, you are going to miss things and you're going to make mistakes and there's going to be errors in your book. So the way that copy editing and proofreading re works in a traditional publishing house is it's at the very end of the process. So you don't do it in your first draft, okay? Don't even worry about it. Pretend that everything's perfect <laughs> um, because It'll get to that end phase and that's when it gets fact checked and that's when it's going to get go through a copy editor. If it's at a traditional house, it'll go through the copy editor, it'll come back, then they'll go to a proofreader. So it kind of goes back and forth like this, okay? So don't stress about having this perfectly well done book. Now, we'll talk in a minute about self-publishing, okay? And that's a whole different animal. All right, but what can you do? I know you're asking, so what can I do to prepare my book so that it can be the best that it can be and not have a ton of errors? Well, the first thing you can do is create yourself a style sheet. A style sheet is kind of a list of things that you are doing purposefully, okay, uh, in your book that you want it to be phrased that way. And it's a reminder to yourself. Okay, so spellings, consistent phrases, wording. So I used to live in Boston, we called the subway the T, uh, or we just call the subway trains, you know, because they are technically train cars. And so you'd be like, yeah, I'm getting on the train. Uh, it does not mean I'm getting on a choo-choo train, right? If I'm getting on the subway. You need to be consistent. If you're gonna call it the train, call it the train throughout the whole book, okay? You know, define that at the very beginning and then throughout. Uh, if you're going to have italicized anything that is a personal thought, make sure you put that on the style sheet. Uh, if you're going to use proper names or capitalizations or they're going to be slightly different, so let's say that you wanted to add a, a tilde to a certain word because you really want to make sure that uh, that tilde is in there because it's important for your character's name, Andrea, to have a tilde in it. Make sure that that's on your style sheet because what you can do with that style sheet is one, it helps you stay consistent but you can also give it to your publisher who can then also go, oh, see, these are actually stylistic choices that the author made. And they can then in turn give that to the copy editor so that they know that these are actually things that you purposely have in the book. And they can make sure that it's consistent too, because I will bet you that you'll get something wrong, even though it's your own style sheet. Then you need to do a little bit of homework. I don't want to call it homework. We, we, I know we all took like how to, you know, what a past participle is, what a hominin, what a homopho homophone is, and you might have forgotten. And so it's really important that you go back and kind of make sure you're familiar with how the different there, there, and theirs are used. Um, because it is not a good look to submit a book and you not know the difference. Using the wrong homonym, you know, uh, in context or using the wrong homophone in context uh, could be a problem and the author's going to pick up that you know this writer 
doesn't really know. Now remember I told you this is English centric. So, you know, if you're coming from another country and you're writing a book in English, you just need to make it clear that from the beginning, hey, I, English is my second language so that the editor is prepared to have to go in and make sure that some of these choices that you've made for writing uh, are consistent as well. And I also think about even if you're from the UK, um, I when I worked at Candlewick, one of the things that I had to do once was go through an entire book and find every instance of the word like neighbor, armor, uh, doctor, and with neighbor and armor, I had to remove the U, the extra U, uh, and just kind of go whoop and go, nope, that, that needs to go. I had to go through the whole book and do that. Go through and find all the instances of very British sayings and, and spellings and remove them. And so in Britain, they don't put a dot, a period after doctor or mister or missus. And I had to go in and add those dot, circle, make sure it was in there, you know. And so those are things that, you know, you can alert your editor about. Um, but for the most part, if you're an English speaker, it's kind of expected that you would at least know some of the differences between some of these homophones, especially. Um, it's okay if it's not perfect again, but if your whole book is full of like you have no idea and you're, it's constant misspellings and the wrong words and all that stuff, it's going to turn off an editor, I think. Um, in fact, I kind of know <laughs> that it will. Um, and then there's punctuation, which again, I mean, that's going to be cleaned up in copy editing, right? But being consistent with your punctuation, making sure that you're using it correctly is helpful um, in the long run. It's helpful for you, the author, so you don't have to fix as much later. Um, but it's also helpful uh, when you're you're not using like a million exclamation points. I I'd recently edited a flyer and I counted seven exclamation points on the flyer and I was like seven, one, you know, like if, if any, honestly, uh, because there are stronger words that you can use other than an exclamation point. So really didn't see the point of seven. I removed all of them, by the way, I got rid of every single one. And then I just bolded the first one. They'd be like, hey, this is a fun thing you should do. Uh, and I think that that works much better than seven exclamation points. So something to be aware of. Um, if you're a new writer and you've never written a book before, then a beta reader is an essential of writing. Okay. Uh, you need to have someone go through and help you find those misspellings and the weird punctuations and incomplete sentences because it'll make your book stronger. Not perfect, not perfect, but stronger. And that's what you want. You want a stronger book, especially if you're trying to get it traditionally published because I, I know that agents and editors are not looking for perfection, right? They know that they're gonna have to go in and, and fix things. But there is kind of an expectation these days, especially because there's so much software and access to beta readers and, and editors and things that you're not going to just present them with a book that's just a mess, you know, and they're probably going to reject it if it is. Um, learning how to also do basics like, you know, we talked about in, in our essentials of writing. So going backwards, right? You also need to have all those things that we've talked about. Um, kind of present, right? Proper dialogue that's actually like done correctly. You know, it's very easy to Google how to do dialogue. So you shouldn't be presenting them with a book where the dialogue's all done in a big chunk in a paragraph and they'd be like, what is this? You know, have they never read a book before? So those are things that you can do to clean up your writing and make it better and get it ready to be copy edited and proofread. Then you need to take a step back, okay? And after you finish editing a book, or you finish writing your book, you've written that first draft, that is not the time to hire a copy editor or a proofreader, all right? Your book needs to go through probably several more drafts, at least a second one, if not a third or a fourth. Um, you don't hire somebody unless you are self publishing. I know I've said this before, you can go back and watch my editor's video uh, specifically about this. You do not hire editors, copy editors, or proofreaders if your plan is to traditionally publish your book, okay? Unless you really think it's a mess and you're like, I've never written a book before and I really don't know what I'm doing and I need a developmental editor to help me with this stuff. But a copy editor and a proofreader, unless you're self-publishing, you shouldn't be hi hiring somebody, okay? And you definitely don't hire them for your first draft, okay? 
Those are the people who do it at the very end, at the very, very, very end, which is why this video is at the very end of the series, past uh, NaNoWriMo, which I hope you did well. I hope you did well, really well and you wrote your book. I did not write during NaNoWriMo because it's my busiest month for editing. Um, but I hope that you wrote a lot. And then here's what I'm gonna suggest that you do with that book that you just wrote, if you did. I think you should take a step back. I think you should stick it in a drawer. I call them drawer books. We'll talk more about that in a, in a future video, but take that book and set it aside. And don't look at it for a little while uh, because you're really close to it right when you finished it. Take a break from it, even if it's just a couple days, and then step back in and start reading it. And oh, you will notice the mistakes. <laughs> You'll be like, oh no. Uh, or send it to a beta reader when you're done with it. That's usually what I do. I send my books to a beta reader after each draft, but a different beta reader each time because they'll each catch different mistakes. Uh, or take it to your, you know, your group. Um, you will catch mistakes as you revise. So as you go, you'll be like, oh. And then I also wanna point out that I have some books on my shelves that as I've been reading them, I will catch mistakes. I'll be like, uh, I think that's supposed to be the word T-H-E, not H-E, and they forgot a T and nobody caught it. Uh, I've talked before about how Jumper, the original book when it came out in the 80s, um, had a ton of mistakes. And so the only good thing about the movie, which was terrible, was that the book got reprinted and they fixed all the copy editing issues in the book. And I, I bought another copy just so I could have one that doesn't have constant errors in it. And then pick your book back up, all right? Start reading it after you've let it sit for a little while. Start making lists of common errors that you see that you make because then you can just do a search and find throughout the, 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 the piece and find the things that you've been making mistakes for. Um, you know, give it some time, you know, to start revising and don't worry so much, especially if you're only in the second or third draft, don't worry about the copy editing stuff. Cause, and then here's the final, my final piece of advice is that accept that there will be mistakes in your book. Just accept it and move on with our lives because there are going to be mistakes and your word or Scrivener is not gonna catch them uh, because they are technically spelled correctly. They're just the wrong bear, uh, B-E-A-R instead of B-A-R-E. Uh, and, and you're, it's just not gonna catch it. Um, if you've made it to this end the process, if you make it to the very end, um, and you know you have your copy editor, your proofreader that you hired, or you're going through a traditional publisher, here's my little bit of advice for this very end of your book. Don't be difficult. Uh, be quick with your turnarounds. Uh, you know, fix things you know, quickly as, as you're expected to do. Um, and I say that from working in a publishing house where you know, authors would be like, they know that their book was going to copy editing that week and then they go on vacation for a month and you couldn't get a hold of them and it slowed down the whole process and then the book's not gonna make the printer and everybody at the publishing house is freaking out. So fast turnaround, um, you know, know your schedule ahead of time and make sure that, you know, your vacation does not correspond in the middle of you needing, your, needing to actually give things back to the publisher. Um, don't argue with the copy editor about whether a word is hyphenated or not. And I say that because they know. These people usually have certificates in copy editing. They have been through copy editing classes. They may have a degree in publishing and they are very well versed with the Chicago Manual style or whatever style guide they're using. And you arguing with them about whether something should be hyphenated or not. Um, it, I mean, really, you're not the copy editor. That's their job. You know, you're the writer. You did your job already. Now let them do their job, okay? Um, if you're hiring somebody, I will harp on it again. Make sure you pay them well. Uh, make sure it's commiserate, of course. You know, you don't want to hire somebody who's going to charge you, like, way too much money. But make sure that you're actually paying people what they're worth, you know. Um, and then don't expect perfection. Even the published books that ha have mistakes. So we're, we're human and we make mistakes and we miss things and we, you know, we get in a mode or somebody says something in the other room and you're distracted for a moment and you miss that T-H-E 
that's actually he and you got to fix you know you don't you don't see it and so it never gets fixed and it gets printed into the book uh, and that's my advice for copy editing proofreading and the end of our series. I hope that you've learned a lot. I've had actually a really interesting time doing this. It felt a bit like a marathon, you know, because I wanted to make sure I got all this information in there and boil it down to some easily manageable chunks. I don't like that word chunks. <laughs> So don't forget to press like and subscribe to my channel. I post new writing tips almost every Friday. Uh, if you think you're ready to hire an editor, uh, you can check me out at galaxy-inc.com. This is my last video for the year. I am taking a break for the holidays. So I'll see you again in January. I've been Venus with Galaxy Inc. I hope your writing is out of this world.